Hey guys, um, I hope you're well. So these are my, uh, this is going to be a long video because these are my top tips for year one, so year 12, um, of a no, of A level languages, modern languages. So I do um, A level uh, Spanish, I'm in year 13, but these tips will apply to pretty much any other modern language, like Portuguese, French, German, Russian, Hebrew, Arabic. Um, some of these will also apply a bit to um, ancient languages like Latin or Greek, but maybe not so much. Um, so um, I started doing Spanish this time last year, um, a bit earlier, and these are um these are all the tips that i picked up not just from myself but a few from other students but mainly from myself um that i, I thought really helped me and i think these are like really essential um I, I i feel like there's a lot of other tips that i have not written down that as soon as i finish this video i'm gonna run but i'm gonna be like <gasps> but these th there's a lot so these should help you out so okay so i'll just get into it so number one organization like i know that sounds like really like what like that's so obvious but like seriously organization makes your life so much easier like what i'd recommend not just for not just for the language that you're doing but for all your subjects is having a folder because um like this one's my uh, A-level Spanish one because it just makes things so much easier so then you know where to put things because a lot of people they collect the sheets and the like the vocabulary that they get throughout the year and then they and then and then they just like put it in the bag and then they lose it and then they're like oh crap I really needed it and like you don't want that to be you so like what I'd recommend if you had a folder um that I just put away I'd recommend having it roughly like this one the um the first section being like the general um topic like stuff like information etc another one being like vocabulary another, another section being grammar another section being um speaking like speaking practice speaking cards um and another section being the uh, literature element um you obviously you can divide as you like but i think that's the best way because um for aqa spanish um and german and um and French we have 12 topics and sorry um excuse me um what I try to do at the beginning I try to uh, split it up into those 12 topics but that was just too much so I just kind of just split it up a bit like that a bit differently but that's what I'd recommend at the beginning also just keep everything like keep all the all the sheets you get keep them all in your folder and then every like few weeks or so like um go over it and like that just makes life so much more easier another thing is um check out the specification print it out like print out the exam overview because that just makes life so much easier so then like you just know what what is what like th and this is this goes for all your subjects like um um if you if you're doing aqa french german or spanish um look at my previous video which is kind of like the exam breakdown of each paper and specification um and away from organization so Number one, don't, sorry, I'm just getting away a notification. Um, don't be intimidated because literally at the beginning of the year, up until like, I'd say November-ish, I, I, I was really, really struggling. Like I knew that it'd be difficult. And at the beginning I was like, oh, it's not too bad. But then I just got, I just started to find it really difficult. And um, I, I, I even considered dropping it, which um, I felt like a t really like short bit, not so much ser seriously, but um, because I was just really struggling, especially with the grammar and with the reading and the listening, and and I really loved the subject, so that made me sad. But I, but oh my gosh, so many things that like I know how to say and how to recognize and how to do now, I could not have done this time last year i don't even think i could have done it like this time six months ago because in a level you improve a lot like it's quite intense but you do improve a lot like and um if you follow these tips like this will help you to improve but seriously like i was the other day i was doing some uh, like grammar exercises and i was like oh my god danilo like you would not have been able to do this a year ago because i wouldn't have it like the practice really helps, but I'll get into that. Um, number one, vocabulary. So obviously vocabulary is important um, because obviously that's going to help you with whatever aspect of the um, of the subject, like uh, whether it's writing, speaking, listening or reading, especially reading, to be honest, you will need vocabulary. Um, 
so what it for what they do for aqa languages anyway at the end of each topic they have like um a set list of vocabulary so uh what i what we did in my class which i think was really useful is every week she'd give us a quiz on like a subsection um of, of these words and we'd always have to learn it so what i i do is i'd always make them into flashcards so um these are these are kind of this this is not my only power i have like five of these like i have so many that i could not even fit them in a sh in two shoe boxes like that's how many i have and this and that was only year one so at the end of year two oh gosh um but seriously you um vocabulary is really important because um look because like otherwise you're just not going to understand what you're reading and you're just not going or listening to and you're just not going to have that you're not going to be able to produce as much language and one way i'd suggest like learning it is like do it little but often like maybe try doing it for even like um try doing it like three times a week for 20 minutes like every week um and it's just better better than cramming it all in at the end so as i said as i said we had to learn 15 words of the book um every week so i'd always make my flashcards and i'd learn them like the day before and then the day of the like test it wasn't really a test it was more like a, a pop quiz and um i'd always and at the end and then i just put the flashcards into the pile and i'd revise them every so often like that just really helps like um even in like exercises like in class it just really helped and i did this at gcc and it just like i can't tell you how useful this is um and one other thing is whenever you see something a word that you don't recognize highlight it keep a note out keep a note of it learn like like see what it means and like learn it like make it into flashcards put it into quizlet put it into write it on your wall um like whatever you can because if it comes up again you will really want to know what it means um, I'm not really ma making sense, but it's quite important. And also when, um, if you're trying to like, if you're doing a translation, you're trying to say a sentence in the language, or you're doing an essay, and you think of a word and you're like, oh gosh, what does that mean in Spanish? What does that mean in German? Write it down, say, um, how to say X in whatever language, and look it up and like, make a note out of it and learn it. Because um, honestly, that is just going to, that is just going to really help you with all of your skills, like, whether it's listening, reading, writing, etc., it's just going to really help you. Um, and and on on how to learn vocabulary, there's a lot of ways. Like as you, as I've said, I do flashcards. So what I do is I do Spanish at the front, like Spanish at the front, and then English at the back. And then um, what I do is I learn, like I learn them. So I test myself, mm -hmm. and if I got them wrong, I put them back into the pile. And um, mm -hmm. Uh, but d what I do recommend if you do this is don't don't just don't just do it one way don't just do it from the target language to English or the other way around do it both so what I'd usually do is um I'd start with a Spanish to English and then I do English to Spanish because then it helps you with producing the language but also recognizing the language um and other ways there are lots of other ways you can put them all on Quizlet and test yourself you can put them um you know, on memorize that's a really good website um one another good thing that i did at gcc and a level is i um put them onto post-it notes and then i'd uh, put them around the house like um in the bathroom or at my door um at my bed etc and so then i just so then i'd always read them and be reminded um and what i'd also recommend is um i don't know if this is just me but um wait one second Okay, that was smaller cough than I expected. But, um, I don't know if it was just me, but I always found some words like even harder, like to memorize than others. So what I'd recommend is, um, this is a good strategy tip, which I, I, I should use. But when you get like a new section of like vocabulary, l revise it. Then the day afterwards, revise it again. Then the week afterwards, revise it again. And then the, and then revise it every month or so. And then the words that you continually continuously get wrong or forget, revise them the revise them the most. Like make them your priority because there's no like because it's good to go over what you already know just to like refresh, refresh yourself. But it's also important to know what you don't know. I'm not making sense, but uh, I I promise I'm I'm what I'm saying is true. Um and uh, under. Uh, and on the subject of vocabulary repetition is important like because um this is not just information that like you need to put in tests this is like 
um, in, in, like vocabulary, grammar, etc. Like, um, the more you do it, the more it gets into your head, and the more you get used to it, and the more you know how to use it, and the more you know how to recognize it and do questions. So, like, re repeat, like, um, do. Like, do vocabulary and then do it again the week afterwards and then do it again the month afterwards. Do some um, grammar exercises and do them again, um, like, a week afterwards. Repetition is important, but also variation because you don't want to be doing, like, a week of grammar or, like, a month of vocabulary. Like, try to vary your tasks. Make Maybe do, uh, maybe say, okay, Monday afternoon I'll do vocabulary um, because on Mondays I'm very tired and vocabulary... Um, I f vocabulary is quite like it keeps me engaged and then on Tuesday I'll do grammar and then on Thursday I'll do my other subjects etc etc um, and keep them varied because you, you don't want to do doing the same thing because then you lose concentration and then you lose and then you just it just doesn't go in and then you're just kind of wasting your time and like you don't want to waste your time because language learning is fun and it's rewarding but um, it also requires like a lot of work like sometimes m more work than others but um it still requires a lot of work um and then another thing with grammar um grammar <sighs> grammar's like grammar will be the best like the death of me i really really struggled with grammar but what i'd always thought is that um grammar is a bit like maths like the more you some things will be easier to apply than others but the more you practice the better you are, the better you are like um what i'd always do is i so i get the grammar i'd make like the rules like the tables um into um into flashcards and then i do some exercises um what i've realized is that doing exercises again and again really helps especially with like um irregular words like words that don't follow the set structure but you need to know anyway like i also made flashcards of like really common like irregular words like for example i was or uh we went like what words that like you will definitely use like if you like if you think of a word like that you need to conjugate and you know that you'll need to use it in an exam or in an essay or something like learn it like find out what it is ask your teacher look it up online and learn it because it just makes your life so much more easier and on the subject of teachers ask so i'll ask all the questions you need like literally I used to go in to my teacher like with like 10 questions saying what does this mean what does this mean what does this mean how do you say this how do you use this and I'm really glad I did because it really like helped me learn um m one of my teachers um my Spanish teacher always says um if you ask a lot of questions it means you're learning and it does like it just it means that you are improving you're you're knowing you're learning things that you didn't already know um sorry that sounds really basic but it's true like um if you learn if you learn, if you ask questions and you learn them, then you're just improving your knowledge. And it just makes life so much easier. Um, so many, literally, as I've said, I did, last year, when I used to read things, I'd never understand what they are. But now I can use them in my own writing. Like, obviously not all of them, but I, then that's because I asked questions. Like, I didn't just say, oh, I understand it. And then just, like, went home and cried because it was so difficult. Um, and what I mean, I may have done that a few times. Oops. But, um seriously so ask a lot of questions like even if you've asked that question before and you didn't um you didn't like understand it ask it again like um because sometimes like things m might need to be explained several times or they might need to be explained in different ways because everyone learns in different ways um and now and then this one's um a bit um wait no sorry uh, what am i saying one good website that i'd recommend for um for grammar is Konhugamos. I have probably said that really badly, mm -hmm. but it's um, they have all the main languages. So they have uh, Spanish, they have uh, they have Spanish, they have French, they have Portuguese, they have Italian, they have German. They even have Latin. I'm pretty sure. Um, and they're probably going to add some more. And they just have a lot of grammar like exercises. They have graded practice, um, so you can. Um, what I like about it is that they'll they'll also have irregular like stuff, and then. Um, they'll have like sentences and you need to conjugate them and um what i like is that when you press submit it'll tell you all the ones that are right but also all the ones that are wrong and you can keep on putting the you can keep on filling the ones that are wrong until you have a hundred percent um which i think is really good because it doesn't just tell you the answer and then you forget about it it makes you think and think oh did i use this wrong or oh is this actually regular like 
literally, I, I, I used it, like, I think once last year, and I found it helpful, but then I never used it again. But I had, like, a f couple of grammar tests this year, and um, I started using it, and it was really helpful. Like, on my on the grammar, like, tests, I always used to get, like, really, really, like, not good. Like, not not, not good, but, like, not what I was hoping for. And recently, we had one on the present tense, which I know is basic, like, quite basic, but it was, like, irregular. And I always struggled with that sorry i don't feel really well right now um and i i went on that website and i practiced and i really really understood like it really really helped me understand and it made me look up things and it just really helped me and i ended up getting 19 out of 20 on that test and i have never even gone gone close to that so i was really really happy with that so Kono Gamos, i'm going to link it down below that is a really useful website mm -hmm. there are other useful websites such as um such as memorize because with memorize um it's really good with learning vocabulary um and learning quotes for english but that's but this isn't about english um it's really good for learning qu quotes like uh, i mean for learning vocabulary you can either put in your own or you can put in other you can put you can either put in your own vocabulary or you can put in um or you can look up that you can look up you can look up aqa spanish um a level aqa german a level etc like i'm sure it'll be there and also has pronoun it has pronunciation most of the time which is really good and speaking of which um speaking um oh was that a pun anyway um speaking is really important like one of my main like failure well not failures but like one of the main things that was really um keeping me down last year was my speaking because um what we what we had at my school we had speaking practice and every week we'd go and we just speak spanish but at the beginning i just used to go and like just speak but then i realized i had to go in and like prepare things and that when i started doing that that was just really helpful because for uh spanish a level no for most languages a level you'll have um they'll give you a card and you'll have like a discussion about it and if you practice that um in like with a speaking assistant or with your teacher like it just makes you know what to say you know what to not say you know pronunciation you know um you you learn what can get you higher marks you learn how to um say things correctly like it just makes it just really improves your speaking skills which are really important and also pronunciation like that's really important like um like even if it's just basic stuff, like for Spanish, double L is pronounced Y, yeah, but I always forgot that. Um, and so I'd always pronounce it like L. Um, and then that also, um, but then when I started using it, I felt more confident. And um, it also got me more marks because I was more accurate and I made more sense. And also with listening, like it really helps your listening skills Um with um if you know how to pronounce correctly so if you see a word and you don't know how to pronounce it i'll go to like your Sp your languages teacher or your languages assistant or someone who's <laughs> fluent in language and it just makes things so much easier um and um another good uh, another good place where to practice speaking is duolingo because um they have exercises um it, it, drilling goes good even if you just do like five minutes a day because it's just regularly keeping you up to date with the language and it's also um also drilling goes fun um like i can't deny that but anyway, um what what i like about it is that um they have exercises well they'll say there'll be a phrase and you have to repeat it and they'll check that you've pronounced it right correctly which is really good um it, which really helped me over the summer like i always used to pronounce just certain words wrong again and again and then it just really helps me because and it just really helps in general um anyway moving on um also um Again, um, if you don't understand certain structures, like ask your teacher, ask someone who's learned in language, or look it up, because because these might come up again and again, and there might be a time when you need to start using them, like in translations or something. And um, the sooner you ask, the sooner you can start like recognizing it. Um, so please, like, um, and maybe and when you they do t and when you do find out what it means, like write it down, make a note of it, make it into a flashcard put it on your wall just remember it like maybe even like have like a list of like complex structures um also because then you can also use it in your exams like in your in the not not so much the writing but in the speaking um and also in the translations if need be um uh, speaking of like ke um keeping lists of in addition to vocabulary and to um 
and to the set voc and to the set vocabulary and grammar. Um, similes is also a really good idea because um, you don't need them that much, but if you can include one in your write in your speaking, it just gets you more marks. So maybe like learn like some um, like five or so similes, like um, maybe learn like them like throughout the year. Um, and I just and uh, and not only is that re not only does that like help you get more marks, but it's also like really cool and it makes you feel confident. Um, I think. I hope. Um, also, with the literature element, like the essays. Oh my god, I used to really well. I say I used to. I actually really struggle with that. But one of the main reasons was, one, it requires a lot of practice, like. Because the literature is really, um, because, well, first you're writing whole essays in the language, and, like, you haven't done that before. Um, with the new, a with the new GCSEs, the gap between GCSE languages and A-level languages is smaller than it used to be. Like, it used to be massive, and now it's smaller, but there is still a gap. And writing languages, essays in target language isn't easy, but you do get used to, like, the more you do, the easier it gets, the more you get used to it. And also, um... And also, let me just check that my phone is not... Okay, phew, I, was, I thought it was on, like, 5%. Um, and also, one of the main things I realised with um, the essays for literature, so the book and the film and the play, um, or you only do two, but is that I do always overcomplicate things. Maybe that's because I do A-level... Uh, other essay writing subjects, I do A-level English literature and A-level classics, so I do always overcomplicate things. But it's quite a basic structure, like, it's just P-E-E, -E, so point evidence explanation um i think and um so i'd always overcomplicate stuff and a lot of things that applied in my other essays like don't work in this in these types of essay it just requires a lot of practice so like when you do your essays like um try to do them calmly and like um try to do them calmly and then whatever feedback you get apply it into your next one and just practice and practice because that really helps about really please don't get stressed about them because in AQA um, A levels, they're only worth twenty percent, and so each essay is worth ten percent. And obviously, every percent counts. But like, don't think, oh, not like, don't lose sleep over it. If you get me, um, and but ser 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 seriously, so many. P I'm gonna like kind of qu um quote Eve Bennett, but like enjoy the process because like you're learning literature in another language. Like try to like enjoy it. Like even if you have to write essays about it, like think. We have we get to study a film, we get to study a book, like you just um like try to enjoy it because a positive attitude will make you more interested. And also just knowing the just knowing the book or the play or the film really well, just that really usually helps. Like obviously it's really complex language because it's not written for beginners or like for intermediates, whatever we are. Um it's written for like native speakers. Um so the language will be quite complex and you won't understand all of it and that's okay like seriously it's okay like languages are really hard to learn so please don't let that put you down okay this video is going uh, quite slowly so i'm going to speed up synonyms so one of the main things you need to learn are synonyms um i feel like i've said that wrong but they're basically words that have the same meanings but they're different words um not because in the exam not only are you gonna have exercises where you need to look for synonyms but you also have um exercises where you have to summaries where you have to um summarize a certain passage in like 90 words and um you'll need you'll be expected to use synonyms so your own words so the more synonyms you know the the better it it will be for your exam. So basically, the more the more words you know, the better it'll be for your exam. So whenever you're doing like uh re whenever like you're reading something or you're doing like a tra uh reading exercise or translation and you see a word that you don't know, highlight it, look it up, and like learn it because then it just makes life so much easier. Um, and also with practice, practice is really really important. Like as I've said, um. Like the more you practice, the better you are. Like, um, my like my Spanish teacher, she sets um a lot of homework. Not no, not just my Spanish teacher, but like all Spanish teachers, like all languages teachers, they set a lot of homework, like exercises. And at and at first, I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is too much. But like, um, it really helped me because when it got to like exams or even just like exercises, now I'm just I've just done it so many times that it just really helps. Um, and like no, no, it doesn't really help, but like it's just. I'm used to it, so, like, I know what I'm doing, and it just makes me so much more confident, honestly. 
Um, and like, so the more you practice, the better you are because, um, I don't even make sense, but the more you practice, the, um, the more you get, it gets used to it in your brain and the more you start to recognize what works for you and what doesn't work for you because everyone learns differently. Like most, a lot of people learn by just writing things down um, again and again, but that doesn't really work for me. For me, flashcards works, like testing myself and correcting myself, that works. And, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of places where you can, uh, practice, like for example, um, um, French, German, and Spanish, they have AQA, they have these workbooks, and there's another one, and they just have a range of exercises like speaking cards, um, translations, etc. Um, honestly, the more translations, the more speaking cards, etc., that you do and prepare, and the more essays, the better it will be, like, and that's just not, not that's not only just for, like, languages, that's for all subjects. They also have grammar booklets, and you can get, and as, as well, con jugamos, and don't be ashamed if, like, your method like a method of work doesn't work for you like um it, for grammar uh, my teacher would use a range of like um exercises like no not exercise but like um revision like not revision books but like um explanations um uh, from the various sources and whilst most people found them really um simple to understand i really struggled and i always thought oh my gosh it's because i'm like um, because I'm not smart enough, but it's just because everyone learns differently and I just I looked at like for example the back of the textbook And I just thought oh my gosh this explains it in a more simple way So this really helps you whereas people were saying no this is too simple So like so see don't be ashamed of how you learn if something doesn't work for you try another way Speak to your teacher try to find out what way it works for you Like it just makes things so much easier and also if you're doing practice correct your work because there's no point of just doing practice and then like not doing anything about it you need to correct your work see where your mistakes are and then, so you don't make the same mistakes again like um because honestly if you're just doing the same thing again and again you could be doing the same thing wrong again and again so it's really important if you correct it even if you don't have to answer go to your teacher and say is this correct can you please um mark it like it just yeah also just rest the films they have re some of the films or books have revision guides like this is the revision guide for the film we do volver but um what i don't really like about it is that they have they they, they have like a lot of detail which is, is too much detail so it's a lot of detail so just try to like find like the key information but yeah speak to your teacher about that also one thing that i think is not going to be mentioned like elsewhere is the speaking so the speaking I know I've touched on this, but for the speaking, you'll get a card. So, and it'll kind of ask you questions about the topics that you've been learning. So, what I did, um, I always got stressed about it, but I did this at the end of last year. So, um, throughout the book, there's various articles and, like, uh, things related to the, um, to the, like, topics. So, what I did, um, I went through my, um, I went through the book and I made flashcards of like each topic and so for example um like this is how many I had in total so it was a bit too much to be honest I went a bit OTT but um I made I made flashcards for like um all the different like like f so different festivals different like food um all the topics that we we're doing um and I also had like a list of like expressions just to help me in the exam because um so then when it came to the exam I had a lot of information like you don't need to know that much information if you learn like two three facts um about from each sub -top topic it'll just mm -hmm. really help when it gets to um like exam time like you just need to go over them and what i'd recommend doing from the start is um going through the book um it's, go it's going through the book the textbook or even just like finding out your own information and just like kind of making like flashcards or like a, a like fact like book so just so then at the end of at end of the year you don't have to rush through and try to find as many information as pos possible also um, an um another thing is um also another thing, um, if you're doing listening exercises, I used to find listening really, really hard. But honestly, the more the more um, practice you do, the better it is. Um, and um, I think, as I said, pronunciation, learning how to pronounce words just really helps. And learning vocabulary le really helps. And also um, realizing that they're often not as complicated as you think. Because, like, for example, they do, they'd say a whole paragraph. 
and I'd be like, oh my god, this is so, so complicated. But I'd realise that it'd, it'd just be one sentence of the whole paragraph that really related to the question I needed to answer. I'm not making sense, but seriously, um, one of the main thing, <coughs> one of the main ways you can improve is by printing out the um, transcript. If you don't have it, ask your teacher. But if you're doing it from like an AQA website or an OCR website, um, do they, does OCR still do it? But anyway, um, print it out and like, highlight the words you don't know and understand what you got wrong uh maybe what you could do as practice you could go uh, you could listen to something write down all you hear and then um and then compare it so then you know what you've heard wrong and then you know like what to l listen for in the future um sorry i have to like um i'm trying to rush another thing is another and the second part of the speaking is an independent research project and Whilst this is not to, um, this isn't until the second year, though, for us, we did it as practice, but um, what I'd recommend is throughout the two years that you're doing the language is keep yourself kind, kind of, like, up to date with the language, like, up to date with, like, the language, the countries that the language is spoken for, like, in, like, for example, Spanish, it's spoken in not only Spain, but also Mexico, Central America, South America, or most of South America, Equatorial Guinea, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, so um and and like uh vi watch spanish films um visit the french market um keep up with Sp uh, spanish um politics etc um look at things that interest you because then i because then not only does it make you not only do, and li like listen to like music and the language because not only does it keep you interested and also keeps you like um it also gives you a lot of knowledge not only for like a lot of the papers um especially speaking but it also makes you more it gives you um a lot to talk about. It's also especially if you're like applying for languages at university. But anyway, it so then when it get when it comes to looking for your independent research project project, you might have a lot of ideas. And if I feel like if you're enthusiastic about it, you will you will do better because you'll have more to talk about and you'll be more confident. And yeah. Um also another thing um about the um about going through the textbook and making flashcards. Um, one thing that I teach did say is, um, there's no point, like, because um, there's no point learning a lot of facts that you know you're not going to remember. Like, you should rem you should try to remember facts that you, you will remember and you'll be able to talk about, because um, because otherwise there's just no point. Because like, it's not like a pop quiz. Like, they're not going to ask something really really specific. Like, how many um, how many uh, adults in France um work in this sector like they're not going to be very specific specific but they might say what do you know about um what do you know about the econ the economy among um the elderly in uh in germany or etc like so then if you know knowledge like it'll just really help um and um also one thing i'd say is do a checklist like i made a checklist of all the topics so once every time i'd make two flashcards or three flashcards of each topic subtopic um i take it off and also um there's certain things you do need to know for the speaking like for example we needed to know one spanish singer uh one spanish artist one spanish uh well i say spanish it's more hispanic one hispanic um one hispanic um like food one hispanic festival like um ask you to ask your teacher like they'll know the specification like inside out so ask them what you need to know um and also like go through the special specification or if they if in like you're doing a card and they say something like um what um what french um architect do you know like think oh okay i need, I need to uh research a french architect and not only does it also get you interested in the language but it also just it's then you won't run you won't run the risk of um not knowing what to say and i have so much more that i could say but like this video is already half an hour so i'm gonna cut this off now but one thing i'm, I'm going to say is have fun like reward yourself like make, be like mom dad um can we go to france over france in the holidays because it'll really help my a levels um um could we go to the french market could we go to see the spanish film um could we listen go, could we go to this german concert like it really um it reward yourself because language learning is meant to be fun like it's also really rewarding um so try to do whatever you can to like um make yourself like be happy because um like 
A levels are important to an extent, but also your happiness is really important. And um, I think that a lot of people that choose languages, not only because they're useful, but because they're interesting and because the culture is interesting. And what I like about the A levels is that you get to actually learn the culture. You don't, whereas in GCC, it was just um, a lot of vocab, it was just basically learning like the basics, which I really love. Like, I love like Spanish GCC, even if it was mo mostly at the last minute, but um, like in the last year. But I. But in the A level, you get to learn about literature and culture and the economy. Uh, well, not so much the economy, but you know what I mean. Like, so reward yourself and on. Please don't give up. Like, as I've said, A level languages. Well, or to be honest, all A levels, but A level languages as in particular are really um like challenging but remember that is re if it's challenging, it's reflected in the grade boundaries. You won't get screwed over, um, and um. Like, don't give up, like, um, honestly, like, I mean, obviously, like, if, um, you think, oh, it's re this is really, really not for me, like, I've just lost all my interest in it, I think I'm gonna fail it, then maybe consider changing to another subject, but, um, like, don't give up just yet, like, um, as I've said, it just requires a lot of practice, but in A level, like, your, your shot, like, your progress will shoot up, like, um, and then, and then you come out of it, like, being able to speak, like, not perfectly, not 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 necessarily fluently, but like much better than you could have, and it's just really rewarding. And I'm gonna cut this there. I'm really sorry that I've gone on, but I've and I feel like I've missed a lot of tips, and I'm gonna be like, oh shit, like um, I've missed so much, but I'm pretty sure that I've concluded a lot, even at, um. So hopefully this should like help you. I'm going to try to do some more A level like languages videos and just more A level videos in general, and just more videos in general to be honest because I haven't posted in a while um and I really hope this is useful and good luck like as I've said try to enjoy it and yeah thanks for watching and wow this video is 37 minutes great